Now let's discuss consolidation. This is part one of our three part series for consolidation. We will focus on the date of acquisition. During the date of acquisition, very important is you have to know how to compute for goodwill. Okay, goodwill computation. This is from IFRS 3. For the sake of illustration, let's say A acquired 80% of B. A is the acquirer, B is the acquiree. A is the parent, B is the subsidiary. Okay, so how do we compute for the goodwill? Uh, this, ito yung equation. Fair value of consideration transferred plus the non-controlling interest or NCI. We know the NCI is the 20%. Okay, this is 80%. NCI is the minority stake. Minority stake. This should be equal to the fair value of the net assets of the subsidiary plus the goodwill. Okay? It, it means, how do you compute for the goodwill? Gagawin mo lang, fair value of consideration transferred plus NCI less the fair value of net assets, you get the goodwill. Okay? On the other hand, if naman mas malaki yung fair value of net assets than this two, you have the gain on bargain purchase which we discussed in our previous video. Sir, what do you mean by a fair value of consideration transfer? This can be cash payment, okay? Or we also call this the price paid, okay? The parent can also pay using shares, alright? Or non-cash assets. And don't forget, pwede din na contingent consideration. Okay. So the fair value consideration transfer can consist of cash, shares, non-cash assets, and contingent consideration. NCI, on the other hand, can be valued at fair value or at proportionate share. Alright. So this is how you do this is how you compute for the goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Alright. The tricky thing about consolidation is there's what you call the working paper eliminating entries. Okay, so let, we will review that. We will use this. Compile natin dito lahat ng working paper entries that we will encounter in our problems for consolidation. Okay? Don't forget that in a consolidation, there's at least three sets of financial statements. Tama, meron kan two separate FS for the for A and B and then you have the consolidated FS. So imagine this is a timeline. This is January 1. Okay? And this is December 31. Alright, in our illustration, di ba si A, meron siyang separate FS. Di sabihin, pag nag-operate from January 1 to December 31, si A, meron siyang sariling balance sheet, income statement, cash flows, and so on and so forth. Si B din meron. We call this their separate financial statements. Balance sheet, income statement, and cash flows. They have their own separate operations. They have their own separate reporting and books. Right? Okay. Now, at the end of the year, December 31, since isa lang yung owner ni A and ni B, dapat they have to prepare what we call the consolidated financial statements. How do you do CONSO FS? Well, ang gagawin mo lang dyan, yung separate FS ni A and B, i-add mo sila. Okay? Pero, meron ka dapat i-reflect yung what we call the working paper, eliminating entries. Okay? Add mo siya. Add mo yung books ni A and ni B and you also reflect yung working paper entries then you get the consolidated financial statements. Don't forget, ginagawa mo lang to every December 31 and these are only temporary entries. Okay? Meaning, hindi siya magre-reflect sa books ni A or ni B. Okay? Temporary lang siya. Now, sir, ano ba yung mga working paper eliminating entries? And i-list daw natin siya isa-isa. But, as a review, ano ba yung entry natin nung binili ni A ni parent? Okay, so let's say si A si parent, si B or si sub. Alright, what is the entry? In the books of A, your entry is debit investment in subsidiary. Let's just call it IIS. Let's say cash yung binayad. Credit cash. Now, this is the entry at the date of acquisition. Let's say January 1. Tama? Question class, ano yung entry in the books of the subsidiary or ni B? Meron ka bang entry? 
Answer is no entry. Ha? Sir, bakit no entry? Because ang binibili mo in consolidation is the shares of B. Ngayon, may shareholder si B, may current shareholder siya. Ngayon, anong nangyari doon? Sila yung naka-receive dong cash, nagkaroon na ng transfer of ownership doon sa shares nila. Okay, no stock stock ownership. All right? So in short, walang entry in the books of B. Okay? Pero alam natin na si A and B, they're only one entity kasi isa na lang yung owners nila, right? That's why we have to reflect this working paper eliminating entries. First entry. Ah, ito yung critical in consolidation. Pag na-master mo siya, yung working paper entries, then may madali na sa yung consolidation. Okay? Ito yung difference then between consolidation and merger acquisition. Kasi sa merger, wala ka namang working paper entries doon. Dito lang tayo sa dito lang meron sa consolidation. Gets? Okay. First entry is we eliminate the book value or the equity of the subsidiary. Okay? I'll explain ko later why. But the entry is debit CS or common stock, debit APIC, debit retained earnings. Okay? And then credit investment in sub Credit NCI. This is your first entry. Okay, lalagi ko dito in description to eliminate the pre-acquisition, pre-acquisition equity of the subsidiary. Okay, sir, bakit nga ba kailangan niyan? Kailangan mo i-eliminate yung equity ni sub because ang may-ari na niyan is the parent. Okay, so yung mga dating shareholders niyan, wala na yan. So, nabayaran na sila, in short. Okay? So, dapat hindi na mag-reflect to sa consolidated FS. Okay? Just a review. E, add lang natin yung books. I-reflect natin yung working paper entries. Yung first entry natin is this one. So, pag ni-reflect natin to class, nag-credit ka ng investment in sub. Meaning, sa cons, hindi na lalabas yung investment in sub. And then, may lalabas ka rin na NCI. NCI is an equity account in the consolidated financial statements. And because you're debiting the book value of the equity of the subsidiary, hindi na rin siya magre-reflect in the consolidated financial statements. Gets? Okay. So, in your reason why you have this first entry. Very critical. Again, may entry tayo nito to eliminate the pre-acquisition equity of the subsidiary because hindi na sila yung may-ari nung shares or hindi na sila yung may-ari kay sub. Alright? Ang may-ari na doon is the shareholders of the parent gets okay number two all right second working paper eliminating entry now i'll take note of this in the consolidation similar to partnership we have to remeasure the assets and liabilities at fair value okay let's say for the sake of illustration let's say mas mataas na lang yung fair value of the ppe and inventory of, uh, compared to the book value okay so let's say debit ppe debit inventory hindi na magdalagay na amounts uh, na lang pro forma entries na lang credit investment in sub credit nci all right this is the excess excess of fair value over book value sir bakit may excess of fair value over book value because if you just add this the books of a and b if yun lang yung gagawin mo, ang magre-reflect sa Conso FS is the book value of the assets and liabilities of A and B, of the parent and sub. Dapat hindi ganun kasi in business combination, in consolidation, dapat naka-reflect at fair value yung assets and liabilities of the parent, of the subsidiary. Okay? So, this is the excess of fair value over book value of the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary. Gets? Okay. Working paper entry number one to eliminate the book value of the equity of the subsidiary. Uh, entry number, working paper entry number two is to state the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary at fair market value. Okay. Later, para di ka malito, we will apply this as we answer our problems for today. Class, if you appreciate this free accounting tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I have a new video. Alright, let's go to our problem for today. Let's go to the questions. Assume the following independent cases. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ang dami naman problems. Buti na lang at pinakel CPA Review School, isa lang. May pogi problem yung founder. Napansin nyo ba, hindi ako nagpapakita sa videos natin para hindi kayo madistract. Alright, 
Tama na lokohan? Let's read the given on January 1, 2020, the statements of financial position of Brad and Fit Company prior to the combination R. Okay, so cash, inventories, PPE, so total assets, current liabs, ordinary shares, share premium, retained earnings. Alright, the fair value of Fit Company's equipment is 229500 Assume the following independent cases. Assuming Brad Company acquired the stock of Fit Company. Alright, we know Brad is... The parent, FIT is the subsidiary, alright? And we're given the balance sheet of the parent and sub. We will assume that these are at book values, especially we mentioned dito very explicit that the fair value of FIT company's equipment is 229500 We have to restate this at fair value of net assets, alright? Okay, so yung PPE daw, instead of 157500 actually pwede ko na siya i-cross out kasi hindi naman relevant yung book value sa atin. 229500 Let's compute for the assets of fit company of the sub at fair value. Okay, so let's see. 22500 plus 45000 plus equip, uh, PPE 229500 plus 229500 you get here 297 thousand. Okay, 297,000. This is the total assets at fair value. And we know yung important sa is the fair value of net assets. So we have to deduct the current liabilities. 297,000 less 22,500 less 22,500 this is 274,500 the FVNA of the subsidiary is 274 274,500 Alright. Now Let's see. And then, what else? Let's go to problem A. Assuming Brad Company acquired 100% of the outstanding stock of Fit Company, as you can see, binibili mo dito is the shares of the subsidiary, not the assets and liabilities. Okay? As compared to merger, sa merger kasi literally, ang binibili mo dun is the assets and liabilities of the acquiry. For consolidation naman, you're acquiring the shares. In this case, 100%. Wala tayong non-controlling interest, right? Okay. Of fit company resulting to a goodwill of 99,000, contingent consideration of 54, how much is the price paid to fit company stock? Uh, as you can see, class, mentioned dito, uh, goodwill of 99, contingent consideration of 54,000. Contingent consideration is part of the fair value of consideration transferred, right? And then you have also a NCI alright so how do you compute for the goodwill or uh, actually how much is the, the, the price paid okay so lagay mo natin yung formula price paid this is the cash paid okay plus contingent consideration this should be equal to the fair value of net assets plus the goodwill am I right so this is the equation and because the the problem is asking for the price paid. I will compute for this one. Okay? Pero pwede na natin siyang i-plug in yung figures. Price paid plus contingent consideration of 54,000. This one. Okay? 54,000. This is equal to FVNA. What is the FVNA? Nakompute na natin siya earlier. That is 274,500. 274,500 plus goodwill. Goodwill is 99,000. Okay? Price paid is equal to algebra lang. So, 274,500 plus 99 less 54. Alright, let's go calculate. 274,500 plus 99,000 less 54,000, you get 319,500. Alright, so price paid is 319,500. This is the final answer for problem A. Okay, let's go to the next question assuming brad company acquired 70 percent of the outstanding stock of feed company for 157500 uh, this is the cash paid by brad to acquire 70 percent of feed company right and the non-controlling interest is measured at fair value of 91500 how much is the goodwill or gain on acquisition okay now as you can see 70 percent lang yan and that's why we have an nci am i right Okay, so paano natin co-compute siya? Price paid is 157500 Okay, don't forget to add NCI. Okay, just a review. Di ba, nilagay ko earlier, dapat add mo yung NCI. Sir, bakit nga ba nina-add natin yung NCI to compute the 
the goodwill or gain because dapat apples to apples yung comparison natin. As you can see, yung fair value of net assets na yan, lagi siyang 100%. Now, yung i-compare mo dyan should be always 100%. In our illustration, it's 80% plus 20% NCI. Okay? In this case, it's the 70% and the 30% NCI. Okay? The 70% is the 157,500. We add the NCI of 91,500. Okay, given naman yung fair value. So, let's add 157,500 plus 91,500. You get 249,000. 249,000 versus the fair value of net assets. How much is the fair value of net assets? Well, ulit siya. 274,500. Okay, 274,500. Let's see. Difference is so minus 274,500. 25,500. Alright? 25,500. Now, question here is, ano kaya yan? Goodwill or gain? Well, let's analyze. So, ang binayad mo is 249,000 pero ang value niya talaga is 274,500. So, mas maliit yung binabayaran mo compared to the value you're receiving. Right? This is a gain on bargain purchase. So, be careful. Ah. Baka sa choices, if may, sa board exam, syempre may choices, baka doon ka pa magkamali. Nakuha may 25,500, but yung interpretation, nagkamali ka, goodwill na lagay mo. So, sayang naman. Okay? In this case, if naman mas mataas yung binayaran mo than the fair value of net assets, it means that you're paying for something that is intangible. Okay? That is the, the goodwill. In this case naman, since mas mababa than the fair value of net assets, we record a gain in the consolidated income statement. Okay? That's question B. Let's go to question C. Assuming Brad Company acquired 80% of the outstanding stock of Fit Company for 205200 and NCI is measured at NCI's proportionate share. Okay. To recall, NCI can be measured at fair value or proportionate share. For question B, at fair value. For question C, proportionate share naman. Of Fit Company's identifiable net assets, how much is the Conso stockholders equity on the date of acquisition. Okay. First thing is, check muna natin. Ano kaya yan? Is this a goodwill or this a gain? And then later on, try natin i-compute yung conso stockholders equity. Okay. Price paid. Dito natin lagay. Price paid is 205-200. Okay. NCI is, how much do the NCI is? In this problem, well, proportionate share do siya. Okay, we know the total, the total FBNA is two seventy four five hundred. Ang binibili mo lang is eight. Ang binibili mo is eighty percent. So we have an NCI of for twenty percent, right? So two seventy four five hundred times point two, fifty four thousand nine hundred. This is the NCI's NCI at proportionate share. All right, so fifty four thousand nine hundred. Let's add it to two zero five two hundred. Oh, 54,900 plus 205,200, 260,100. 260,100. Versus FVNA of 274,500, we get here the difference minus 274,500, 14,400. Okay. 14,000. Difference is 14,400. Now, what is 14,400? Is this is good or gain? Well, 260 yung binayad natin, 26100, but we're getting 27500. This is gain on bargain purchase. For $14,400. Yes, all right. But this is not the the final answer, right? Because the question is asking for the consolidated stockholders equity on the date of acquisition. Hmm, paano kaya yan? Well, if you look at the balance sheet, tama ba? Meron tayong stockholders equity here. See nga, add natin yan and this one. Let's add stockholders equity for the parent company. 2 to 5,000. Okay. Plus 67, uh, 675,000. Plus retained earnings of 1 to 1, 5,000. We get here two one one five thousand. So basically, I added ordinary shares, share premium, and retained earnings. I got here two one one five thousand. What do you call this? This is the stockholders' equity of the parent at the date of acquisition. Am I right? Okay. Seeing it, compute natin yung subsidiary twenty two five. 
35,000 plus 45,000 plus 135,000 you get 202,500 okay 202,500 what is 202,500 this is the stockholders equity of the subsidiary at the date of acquisition okay now add down natin yung mga related to stockholders equity alright so let's start with the parent okay parent company or brand company 2 one one five thousand. Am I right? Ito siya. Ito lang siya. Okay. What else? How about the sub? Okay. Hindi mo siya ilalagay. Alright. Sir, bakit mo hindi nilagay yung equity of the subsidiary? Okay. So, take note. Looking back to our working paper entry number one. Again, in-eliminate natin yung stockholders equity of the subsidiary. What's the reason again? yung dating shareholders yan wala na yun okay yung current shareholders ni parent yun na rin yung shareholders of the subsidiary gets ba? okay so kaya kailangan mo siyang i-eliminate alright okay yan that's why di mo siya ilalagay dito gets? what else? ano pa yung makaka-affect ng stockholders equity? Mm, how about the gain? yes makaka-affect siya because for the gain Magre-reflect in the consolidated retained earnings in the consolidated income statement. Okay? 14,400 positive, obviously. What else? Don't forget to add the non-controlling interest, NCI. Okay? NCI, through our working paper entries, okay, after everything, entry natin, lalabas si NCI as equity. Okay? Magiging part siya ng equity. So, don't forget to add NCI. This is at proportionate share. No compute natin earlier, it's 54,900. Let's add 54,900. The total is okay, 2,115,000 plus 14,4 plus 54,900. You get 2,184,300. 300. 2,184,300 is the consolidated stockholders' equity at the date of acquisition. That's okay. Yung key lang dyan is yung kaysa sabog mo yung sasama yung stockholders equity niya. Let's go to question D. Assuming bride company acquired 90% of the outstanding stock of fit company for 364500 and NCI is measured at fair value. How much is the total consolidated assets from the date of acquisition? Price paid 364500 Alright. NCI Sabi dyan, at fair, oh sir, asan yung fair value dyan? Hindi naman sinabi sa problem. Bagawin mo, hindi sinabi sa problem yung fair value. We can get that from the price paid. Okay? So, pa din, sir? Well, yung 364,500 represents 90% of the value of the subsidiary. Okay? So, if ang gagawin natin is 364,500, if we divide this by 0.9, makukuha natin yung 100% of the value. Multiply this by 10%, this is the fair value of the NCI. 40,000. 500 gets okay. We add 364,500 plus 40,500. Okay, we get 405,000. 405,000. We compare this to the fair value of net assets, which is again 274,500. Okay, 274,500. What's the difference? Okay, so 274,500 you get 130,500 130,500 this is a goodwill or gain since mas mataas yung binabayaran mo this is a goodwill alright but this is not the final answer because the question is how much is the total consolidated assets on the date of acquisition okay so ang gagawin mo dyan we get the assets of the parent 250,000 and the assets of the sub well, dapat yung fair value of net assets. Huwag yung book value or fair value of the assets. Wala. Uh, hindi yung book value. Alright? So, add lang natin. For the parent, it's 2250. I'll put here the parent. Okay. 2250,000. For the sub, it's 297,000. Okay. It should be at fair value. What else? Ano pa yung form part ng conso assets at the date of acquisition. Don't forget to add the goodwill. Alright? The goodwill, 130,500. Okay. What else? 130,500. And don't forget to deduct the cash. Okay? Yung 364,500. Tama? 
So, because binayad mo siya is outflow, right? Cash payment of 364500 Okay, so let's see. Let's add everything. 2250000 Okay, 250000 Plus 297,500. Uh, ulit, ulit. 250,000 plus 297,000 plus 135,500 minus 364,500. You get here 2313,000. Final answer consolidated assets in the balance sheet at the date of acquisition 2313,000. Okay. And then. Let's go back to our working paper entry. Hindi pa natin nalalagay yung working paper entry for the goodwill recognition. Actually, meron tayong third entry. Di ba? Here, nag-compute tayo ng goodwill, right? The goodwill should appear in the consolidated assets, in the bal consolidated balance sheet, alright? Meron tayong entry for the goodwill. Debit goodwill, credit investment in subsidiary, credit NCI. Okay? This is to recognize goodwill. Alright? On the other hand, if naman gain siya, sa credit side naman yung gain. Okay? Now, we, as of now, we have three working paper entries. Actually, tutuloy natin siya as we go on to the next videos for consolidation. Class, is the end of this free tutorial. Patikim pa lang yan. How do you exactly do step acquisition, reverse acquisition, push down accounting? What if different accounting policies for the parent and sub? What if different reporting dates for the parent and sub? Tuturo namin lahat yan. At pinakel, regardless of your accounting background, we will provide you with the most efficient and effective review by focusing on best review strategies, key points to remember, shortcuts, common tricks, and mistakes. For reservation and to know more about us, visit our website and Facebook page. All the links are in the description below. Reserve now because we only accept limited number of students in order to preserve the quality of our review. Class is missed. See you next meeting.